Hi, tubers of the U. Uh, what we got right here is a simple LCR circuit experiment that exhibits an over-unity measurement. Um, it consists of a simple capacitor and a resistor in parallel right here, connected to a coil in series right here. And uh, right now, this is our input voltage. And I have the load resistor disconnected right now. And I will show you why I did that here in a minute. And so the voltage across our capacitor right now is 12.44 volts. Now, if you notice, this voltage is higher than this voltage right here. Uh, now, the current, now this isn't a spectacular uh, measurement as the the wattages and the microamps are very small. They're they're in the microamp range, in the milli milliwatt microwatt range. So, what we're looking at right here is this tiny little 1.6, one and a half microamp, and all that is what we're observing right there is the leakage current of this capacitor. Now, most capacitors have the characteristic of current leakage and so because of that it has to pull that current leakage from it has to pull the current from the power source so to replace that and so that's all we're looking at right here now the only reason I have a capacitor here is that inevitably there will be some people out there who will say well uh, your measurement isn't filtered or smoothed out so it doesn't have a smoothing capacitor or a bandpass filter. Well, that's what this is basically is a bandpass filter. It filters it out so that the meter uh, can indeed read a very true and accurate voltage, which is this is what it is, 12.44 volts uh, stored in our capacitor right here. And it is much higher than this voltage. And again, this current is just the current leakage coming out of the capacitor. So there's literally no current flowing through this capacitor right now because, well, capacitors act to block DC current and pulsed DC current as well. And to show that this truly is stored in the capacitor, we're going to disconnect it right here. Uh, let's do that right fast. And also, we'll show this disconnected. And you see it's storing the 12.44 volts. So it is indeed there. And there's zero current just to show. And just to make sure, we'll disconnect it right there. And it's holding the 12.44 volts quite well, I might say and it will drop eventually and that's to show that that tiny little microamp we saw is the current leaking out of it so and see now it just finally dropped so let's turn it back on And you see the current's a little bit higher because it, it drained a little bit out of the capacitor. So it has to replace it. And then the capacitor gets charged. Okay. And so it just blocks all the DC or most of it. And that's just the current leakage. So it's very small. And that's a true voltage. So now um, let's look at our timing circuit right quick. This is just a 555 timing chip right there. That little 8 pin chip. Uh, it's got a 0 0.01 microfarad film capacitor. That's the gray box right there. And it has two 330 ohm resistors for the do duty cycle timing. And you can tell with the two orange stripes on there. And that's, they are 330 ohm resistors. Uh, it also has a stabilizing capacitor right there, that little orange tantalum capacitor across pins five and uh, four no one pins one and five 
And those two diodes right there, with the little black stripes on them, are to get the duty cycle below the 50 uh, 50 50 percent duty cycle so basically a little bit faster of a pulse and so this entire circuit is running at uh, about 145 kilohertz and that's really pushing it for a, a circuit like this it's a this 555 timer is a megahertz timer okay so 145 kilohertz is very good uh, for uh, a circuit like this um, very fast so let's connect our load resistor now okay now as you see of course the voltage has dropped and we have a higher current now now this current includes both the current leakage going through our capacitor and the current going through our uh, load resistor this is a 100,000 ohm resistor as you can see that on the little black and yellow stripe so it's a 100k ohms of resistance that is our load and it is a real load um, so now we have 126 microamps and this lines up very well with an ohms calculation so let's do that right fast okay so we have 12.43 volts uh, 42 We'll say 43. So we go 12.43 times, or no, divided by our load resistance of 100,000 ohms of resistance. And as you can see, we have 124 microamps. So this lines up very closely to our 126 microamps we see on our meter so this is a very accurate measurement uh, if I may say uh, and you gotta remember part of that includes the little micro amp uh, if you subtract that then we get closer to what we actually calculated because we only included the resistor in our calculation and not the capacitors current leakage so this is right on and this is the actual current coming through so let's route our way through this circuit so we got our voltmeter right there of course on our uh, input and this is our uh, this is the power source we're pulsing and that we're looking at our battery over here is just running our switching circuit and yes it uses power but we are not looking at that as it's uh, meaningless because the power we want to look at is this power uh, going through our circuit here okay so we start at the negative and if we follow it around like this okay and it goes through our meter to show the current okay and then it goes through our switch into that yellow wire so it's pulsing through that yellow wire into our parallel circuit right here in our load and remember most of the current is flowing through our load resistor only and not so much our capacitor and then it just continues on to our positive through the coil into the positive uh, it also works with the battery power um, just as long as it's kept separated from the power that's uh, I mean I guess you could do it all, all all off the same power supply but I just have it this way to separate the two so you can see more easily what's going on uh, now this also works without the coil okay and the voltage is actually still higher than the input voltage without the coil um, and it doesn't even need the capacitor but it will still show the same voltage but I just have the capacitor on there to 
inevitably there will be people out there who will say, oh, well, your, your measurement's not accurate because you haven't smoothed it out or filtered out the voltage. Well, here it is. This, this is the smoothing capacitor. or It also can be, I guess, considered a, a, a bandpass filter. So the meter can get an accurate reading on our, on our uh, voltage. And so that's what it is. And just like I showed before, we disconnected our switching and our power right here and everything and it maintained that voltage to show that it is truly that voltage all right so here are two circuits hold on a second get this out of the way all right there are two different methods here of measuring right now we're using this method to measure so we got the uh, meter down here and starting from the negative it just goes through into our parallel circuit and going to the left uh, most of our currents going to the left through our resistor and to the right not so much because that capacitor acts to block DC current as well as pulsed DC current and then through the coil of course back to our positive the other way that you can measure is by putting a meter in between the capacitor and the resistor to show the current flowing into the resistor only and not the capacitor and you'll find that it is pretty much the exact same current on the input now the input might be a little bit more because it is supplying the current leakage into that capacitor and of course this meter will be much a little bit lower slightly lower you just subtract the current leakage from the capacitor and uh, that way in that way you can see just the current going through our load so it doesn't need the capacitor or the coil but like I said I keep the capacitor there so we can see the voltage across our load um, let's see what are we missing here here's the whole entire circuit uh, as soon as the camera focuses there we go I'll try to get this all in the one shot it's very hard but this is the uh, entire circuit right here and we did our ohm's law calculation it matches up very precisely so this is the voltage of our load with this current right here uh, practically um, and this is our voltage on our input and our load is receiving more wattage than our input. Uh, so, I don't know if I'm missing anything or not. I don't think I am. But uh, I want you to please try to replicate this experiment for yourself. And uh, I have the schematic provided down there in the uh, description box that you can go look at or, or download or do whatever you want with so you can uh, use it to please replicate it if you can uh, if you have any uh, comments about what you think could be causing a higher voltage I postulate that the voltage uh, doesn't come from the coil or the capacitor but from the high frequency uh, voltage pulses coming from our power supply just the high frequency pulses through our MOSFET switch right there where the yellow wire is on uh, I believe it's coming from that uh, so it's just uh, that's what I believe so whatever you think could be causing this you may think possibly it's a, some kind of voltage transient which it is but please let me know in the comments what you think this actually could possibly be um, that's about it for right now as usual please like and share um, if you're new to the channel please subscribe and thanks for watching have a good one